this is Kari again with Rabbit Revisions and today I'm going to tell you how to write a paper super easily with a tactic we call the spider web. So first of all what you're going to do is write down your topic that you were either given by your professor or that you came up with yourself. If you don't have a topic yet you can check out our article on finding a topic. So start by writing down the key idea for your paper and then list a ton of things that you feel falls under that subject. For this tutorial, I'm going to use a paper that I wrote myself for a class I took in college called Folk Tales of India, which is a very fun class. And I hope that having a specific example helps you understand this concept a bit better. So here we have the main topic for my paper the context in which folk tales are told and how to analyze them according to context. So I'm just going to throw a bunch of things on here. This is the point where you're brainstorming. What you just do is you just take ideas out of your brain place and you just, you throw them all around this core idea. They don't have to be entirely related. This again is just the brainstorming phase. You just throw anything out there you can think of. Boom, 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 boom. Boom. That's what you do. So I wrote down a bunch of things that I feel pertain to when we analyze the context that something is happening in. And these you can write down on pieces of paper or in text boxes on your computer or on index cards and you just throw them up in the air and wherever they fall, that's how you organize your paper. Don't do that. But, but you want to be able to sift them around or move them or rewrite them or whatever because you want to be able to categorize these and sort them, okay? That's the next step. All right, so the next step is to sort these lovely ideas. We're gonna make some subpoints of the others, and some of them will have transition arrows that lead you right along the story to the other part of the story. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. So looking at these ideas, I wrote down audience, social class, culture, humor, location, and tradition. So I'm gonna just draw some lines for the between the ones that I feel like could be in the same category. So I categorized social class with audience and culture I connected to humor and location. Now I'm going to decide which one is, is the head concept, so to speak. Which one's, which one's the big guy in charge, you know, and the other ones are his little bitch. Nope, that's it, yep, okay. Okay, so here I just quickly circled culture, tradition, and audience, because I think that these are the three main categories that I wanna talk about. How many points you have depends a lot on what length your paper is. So the one I'm using as an example was only a five page paper, so I had to keep it very short. And three points is plenty for that length of paper. If you have a longer paper, then you probably want more points or have bigger sub points. Next thing we're gonna do is add some transition arrows to be like, we're here, we wanna be here. How did we get here? Through here, oh. That's how it's gonna work. All right, so I'm going to start with tradition, I think, because that's a pretty big, important category. So let's start with the big one and work our way down. The next one I'm going to do is culture, because tradition and culture are pretty closely related, so I think I can easily move from one topic to the other. And that leaves the only one left is audience, which means that I'll have to find a good transition statement when I'm writing my paper in order to transition from culture to audience. Okay, so now we have a little bit of flow happening, and then we are ready to go on to our next step. The next step is to expand on each topic. Make them bigger, more detailed, add quotes, add examples, add everything. Give them friends and lovers and enemies. Okay, so here I added some subsections to some categories that I already have. So for social class, I broke it down into upper and lower. And audience, I also wanted to talk about children and adults as separate types of audiences. 
I also added for tradition, local, and national. As you can see, these are all really just general things. I just, just break it down a little bit. Next thing I'm going to do is add in some specific examples for a couple of these so you can get an idea. Okay, so here I've added repetitious stories and irreverent stories. These are specific examples of types of stories that I could talk about for my paper. So for the audience, children are big fans of repetitious stories, or at least adults think they are. So they tell them these all the time and repeat the same words over and over again. Or like, Cal says moo, and then these people came, and it said moo again, and then these other things happened, and moo again. Okay, yeah, like we get it. So these are stories that are specifically aimed at children. So I added them as a specific example of how audience affects the stories that get told. And here we have irreverent stories, which is a class of stories that are often told by the lower classes, meaning the people who are not in power. They make fun of the power structures and the people above them. It's common throughout the world. I do have to say that I have sorted the social class into upper and lower. That's a gross oversimplification of how social class works in India. But for the sake of this example, I'll just leave it at that. Each section can have subpoints, and then you can add specific examples to those subpoints, or examples to major points, or quotes, whatever you need to get your point across and to tell your reader exactly what it is that you want to say. Ah yeah, examples. So the next step is to start writing. Yay, that's everyone's favorite part, right? Guys? A anyone? Okay. Okay, so since you already have this concept map laid out, it's actually pretty easy to get writing from here. You start with your introductory paragraph, which will just tell your reader where you're going, these three main points you want to make. And then you move through. Talk about tradition, talk about local and national, and whatever subpoints or examples you've written about these on your little chart here. Same thing, move on into culture. Just turn each of these individual points into sentences, and those sentences become a paragraph, add a transition sentence, Bada bing, bada boom, it practically writes itself, except with your brain and your fingers and your hard work. So once you go through and write these all one group at a time, then it's time for the last step. Time to edit! Now you should always read over your paper before you hand it in, especially if it's a big and important paper. You can have a friend read it, or you can have us read it at Rabbit Revisions. You can send in your papers. It's important to have someone else other than yourself look at it because you know what you meant to say, and you won't necessarily see it if you have jumps in thought or logic or missing a word. So it's good to have someone else's eyes on it. Look at it. Look at it. And now they're all spiders. <laughs> I think I scared myself. This one is the head honcho spider, and he lost a couple legs because he got in fights with the other spiders. Or he was feeding his friends who were hungry because they were working on the farm all day. Okay, so that's not a random example. That's an actual folk tale from India that I read for this class. Let me, let me just tell you how messed up it is. Very. I hope you found this video helpful and that it'll help you get through the writing process a little bit easier. And if you have any additional questions about how to use this technique or about any other problems you've been having with writing, you should leave them in the comments. And you should follow us on Tumblr, Twitter, Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like our videos. Yeah, yeah. And hopefully we'll see you again. Bye. Uh...